I sell their forks, other pushers, a lot of their other uh, equipment as well. I never have warranty claims. They just build high quality stuff up there. It just works every time. But a few things to consider and a big mistake when you order a snowplow too, I wanna help you avoid that if you go that route. Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Did you know it is gonna be a terribly cold winter? Shake, shiver, and shovel. That is the theme according to the Farmer's Almanac with a huge portion of the country being in the hibernation zone. Now take that for what you will. Head to a little research. I guess historically the Farmer's Almanac is only about 52% accurate, but are you willing to take those chances? So it is that time of year to start thinking about snow equipment and getting it on order so we can ship it out soon. This is our first year carrying the HLA snow plows. We've carried their snow pushers for years. Absolutely love them. Our best seller by far. And historically we had carried the Tar River snow plows, but we dropped them. That was the whole thing. We made a whole video about it. We're switching over to the HLA snow plows as well. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of snow plows. I like the snow pushers, but some of you out there really want a snow plow. And this is just like a, a clean, sleek design, robust, heavy duty. It's gonna be built by HLA. They know how to make snow equipment. They're up in Ontario. Their sister company, MK Martin, makes the snow blowers. So they got it covered. They know a thing or two about that white stuff. So I wanna tell you more about this snow plow in particular so you can get a good look at it, all the different angles, the features, what's included. And also, we had a couple things that we did last year on our snow removal setup. We grooved our tires, all right? I wanna let you know how that did, or at least how I thought it did. And then we used a lot of sprays on our pusher and on our blowers to try to kind of keep that snow and ice and everything, the slush from building up and seeing if that improves the quality of our snow removal experience. I'm gonna let you know about that too. Now, don't forget, we do have our preseason snow sale going on right now. We do it every year with the exception of last year because inflation, but we brought it back this year. So now is the time to save money on all the snow removal equipment, including things like ballast weight solutions, all right? Or rear blades, things that go on the backside of the tractor, but you gotta have ballast weight to push snow, to clear snow. So suitcase weights, weight racks, wheel weights, all that kind of stuff, hitch hangers, everything. It's all on sale if it's related to snow and we carry it. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a ballast weight solution for your tractor. You know I'm all about safety and this is just a perfect match. Liquid ballast is one of the most cost-effective solutions. In fact, there's liquid ballast on this tractor right now, right inside these rear tires. So it's hidden, it's out of the way, it gives you that extra stability you need when you're using the front end loader. It gives you safety to keep those rear wheels planted on the ground, and it gives you traction when you need it. Well, why RimGuard? It is a natural product that is gonna be safe around animals and livestock in case you get a puncture and it leaks out. That means it's also gonna be safe on your wheels as well. You know the old calcium chloride that'll rust those things out and ruin them. It is also the heaviest natural ballast weight on the market today and the most convenient, which is available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. So head on over to rimguardsolutions.com to find a dealer near you. All right, so I've got a couple of 1025 hours and one of them, I had the same style of tire. These R4 tires, those thick bars, which I've talked about it a lot, right? These are in my opinion, a terrible snow tire. And unfortunately, they're just kind of the standard tire that are on compact tractors. And so I didn't want to buy completely new tires for that machine. So what I did is I went out and got a tire grooving tool. And it's just this little tool, you heat it up, uh, has these little replaceable blades on there, you get it to a high temperature, and it's kind of tedious to do, but I'm glad I did it because it ended up making a big difference. And I don't have any, what's, what's, that, what's that right word I'm looking for, like objective? I don't have any objective metrics that's what the cameraman says, to prove my point. But all I can do is kind of compare my experience to previously using that same machine, the same tires on there and getting stuck in the side of my driveway, struggling to get up my hill on my concrete drive, and then comparing it to my experience this winter. And every snow season is different, right? So, and it's a different machine, just the same setup. So there's some variables there, but I will say, I feel like it made a big difference in the quality of traction that I had, um, not slipping and sliding going up the driveway, not sliding going down the driveway, just overall being more in control. So I think for, gosh, what was that tool? Under a hundred bucks, I feel like it was. Grooving those tires made a big difference and I would recommend it if you're looking for better traction. So the other thing we did that I wanna give you an update on was again on our snow pusher and then like the, the chute, the auger area on our snow blower as well. We took all these different sprays, kind of sectioned off, sprayed them on there. Again, kind of like a, re a repellent for snow and ice so things didn't stick and accumulate and it just maybe functioned better. Just see if there was an improvement or not. And I've seen a lot of things in forums and everywhere else and for me, 
I didn't notice anything significant at all. And there was no difference between the different sections that we put inside the pusher. The snow just kind of all released the same anyways. We even had a control area with nothing on it too, and, and there was no difference, right? And the snow blower, well, I haven't really ever had those issues. And I know that some folks do, and I'm not knocking that, but for me, there was it was not worth the effort to go through that process for me, and I'm not going to do it again. So I know a lot of you may have a differing experience, and that's okay, that's just fine, but I guess what I'm saying is, for those that are watching, if you had a product that worked really well for you, then leave a comment about it down below so they know something, a suggestion from somebody else in the real world that worked, that can maybe counter my experience that didn't make a difference. All right, well now onto the plow, all right? So I'm gonna tell you the good and the bad about plows in general, tell you the features of this, tell you why I like a pusher, um, but a few things to consider and a big mistake when you order a snow plow too, I wanna help you avoid that if you go that route. And so oftentimes with a piece of snow removal equipment, you're gonna, you're gonna get the outside width of your tractor, you're gonna measure that, say it's five foot wide, and get a piece of snow removal equipment to match that width. Well, the difference with a snow plow is that this is not a very common angle. <laughs> straight on, you know, uh, perpendicular to the machine. You're seldom gonna run it at this angle. Typically, you know, this is the manual angle. You can get this in hydraulic or manual angle, but typically you're gonna be running this at an angle. Let's see, uh, I haven't adjusted this yet, but let's see if we can do that. Got a little linch pin there holding it in. Get a little, little wiggle there and we'll angle it the other way. We'll go this way over here. Put it right down through there. Get my linchpin in there. Okay, so what you're seeing is how you're typically gonna, typically gonna run it. You're gonna run it pushing off to the left or to the right. Doesn't matter if it's hydraulic or manual. And so what this does is changes, it narrows the effective width that you're gonna push snow, all right? And so hang on, I got it on my phone here. I pulled it up. This is a 72 inch wide uh, plow, all right? The snow clearing width, when it's angled, is gonna be 60 inches, all right? So you're losing a foot of width when, when you angle this. So typically with a snow plow, you're gonna go up about a foot in overall width compared to what your tractor is. And you know, a few inches one way or another, depending on your tractor, it's, these are gonna be nominal lengths, right? Five foot, six foot, seven foot, that kind of thing. So just get close to that. But the last thing that you wanna do is not have enough width to cover your tracks because then you're gonna be driving over snow and packing it down instead of clearing it all out of the way. All right, so these are gonna be a loader mounted snow plow and we're gonna have them available for a John Deere quick attach like what you see here or a skid steer quick attach. So if you don't have a John Deere, don't select the JDQA, select the SSQA. You wanna make sure you have that. You're gonna have two levers that are kinda of right in this area here. You pull up on them, swing them open, two pins like kinda of retract from down below that lock it all on. The SSQA, skid steer quick attach are black. The John Deere Quick Attach are gonna be green. Now you're gonna have this nice radius mold board on here. Looks very similar to the mold board that's on the snow pushers as well. Uh, replaceable, reversible, cutting edge. You can get this with rubber or steel on there. Or we also offer the UHMW, which is kind of that uh, really hard plastic. And we sum it up to say that it cuts like steel but protects like rubber. A very good option for paved driveways, whether that's um, asphalt, uh, concrete, if you had uh, you know, pavers or anything else like that too either rubber or the UHMW is a really good choice for that. Now they are gonna have a pair of the, the mold board trip springs on there too, so if you do hit a curb or a, an edge, or if you're on, you know, pushing off your driveway and hit a hidden stump or something else, that'll have some give to it so you don't uh, jar your tractor and your loader and yourself and everything else. Uh, important, I should say on that note, important to wear your seatbelt, okay? Hey, it's a basic thing to do. You'll hear about things in forums and sometimes in YouTube comments or Facebook posts too, where they weren't wearing their seatbelt and they just rammed into a hidden obstacle, um, came to a jarring stop. And then I remember one guy specifically said he broke his wrist because it just came to a stop and just caught it the wrong way. So some bad things can happen. So wear your seatbelt, just a simple safety thing. All right, so two points about float that I wanna make. And the first one is gonna be on the plow itself. The second one's on the loader or the tractor, okay? So number one, you're gonna have lateral float on here, all right? So you can adjust as and kind of contour to those left and right undulations that come up. The second version of float is gonna be on your loader joystick, all right? And we've talked about this too. You push it forward, it lowers your loader, jam it further forward than that, and it's gonna go into a, a float position, which is not gonna have any down pressure. And so you can kind of keep it in that position there. And then as you're going forward, if the ground changes, it's gonna kind of follow it up and down a bit like that. We've, we've done a whole video all about float, uh, probably a few of them actually. But so there's two different versions of float, one on the plow, at least the HLA snow plows, all right? 
and then one on your loader. And here's a look at the skid shoes that are on uh, the HLA snowplow. These are all your adjustment discs that are right here too, so you can put these down below if you want to lower the skid runners. And so that's how you adjust it. Like a common question I'm asked, whether it's a snow plow, a snow pusher, or a, a snow blower, is can you use it on gravel, right? And you can. You typically just want to adjust these skid shoes or on a snow pusher or a snow blower, the skid runners, so that it's basically you're lowering these down so that the wear edge or your scraping edge isn't riding along the gravel, but it's just up above there a little bit. So these lower down and it kind of in effect raises up the cutting edge so you're not scraping off gravel and just going slightly above it. So really it's a pretty clean, simple piece of equipment overall. You do have one Zerk here, uh, so you can grease this main center uh, pivot point and probably more important to do that if you have a hydraulic angle versus the manual. But other than that, it's it's accessible, it's easy. And I know HLA, I have I've literally, I sell their forks, other pushers, a lot of their other uh, equipment as well. I never have warranty claims. They just build high quality stuff up there. It just works every time. Alrighty folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Now, if you're trying to decide between a pusher, a plow, a blower, whatever it is, we've done all sorts of comparisons, all right? And, and it's a decision only you can make. You gotta prioritize the things that are most important to you, you know, whether that's price, uh, application, if you have somewhere to, to pile the snow, if you need to blow it away, um, if you have to get up close to buildings and back drag or retaining walls, anything else like that. A lot of criteria goes into it, so just jot it all down, make a list, and kind of rank it on what's most important. But regardless of what you choose, or if you need those ballast weight accessories or anything else to go along with it, we'd love to earn your business. Give us a shot. Check out goodworkstractors.com. And if you enjoy watching tractor videos, well, what do you do, Luke? Hit that subscribe button. That's right. Subscribe down below, completely free. We'd love to have you tag along. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.